Hi, I'm Stefan Spencer, and I'm going to be talking to you about keyword research uh, for SEO purposes. So first of all, a little bit about me. I'm the co-author of The Art of SEO, author of Google Power Search, co-author of the brand new book, Social E-Commerce. Uh, I founded an SEO agency in the 90s, uh, Net Concepts. I sold it to Kalari in 2010, and I am doing a SEO training and coaching program at scienceofseo.com. So here are my books, so you can see that I know a few things about SEO and uh, am in a position to be teaching you about keyword research now. Uh, this is uh, my daughter's uh, blog, uh, which uh, generated passive income for her over a number of years, uh, up to $1,100 in, in a month, which is pretty awesome. And uh, it was all because she understood how to do keyword research and then to create content around those keywords and then to build up her authority in the eyes of Google by getting people to link to her site. So you can do it too. If a kid can do it, you can do it. So we're going to look into uh, a few different keyword research tools that are part of my arsenal. Um, we covered in a previous segment keyword brainstorming using uh, Google Suggest and so forth, as well as Suvel. Um, but in this uh, segment, I'm going to teach you about the hardcore keyword um, research tools, such as the Keyword Planner from Google and uh, Keyword Discovery and so forth. So let's start with the Google Keyword Planner because, of course, this is the tool to use to get data about Google searchers and searches since this is coming directly from Google. Uh, everything else is either just rehashing the same data that's coming from the Google Keyword Planner, or it's uh, an approximation based on, um, I don't know, looking at uh, a, a sample of Internet searches uh, over a certain set of ISPs or Internet service providers or something like what Hitwise does. So this is a direct from the horse's mouth sort of tool, right, direct from Google. It's free. Uh, you don't have to have a, um, a paid account uh, where you're advertising with Google. You just have to sign up with Google AdWords. You don't have to spend a dime with them. Just having a Google AdWords account will get you into this tool. Uh, you can segment by country. You can segment uh, by t uh, date range and so forth. You can see historical 12-month trends. There's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do inside of the Google Keyword Planner. Um, let's have a look. So this is the um, first screen that you'll get to. Actually, let me even better, I'm going to show you by logging in and, and doing some searches myself. So I'm going to go to the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. I'm not even logged in, so I'm going to sign in with my AdWords account which is the same as my Google account. It's just that I went and signed up with AdWords, and I'm not actively spending any money with uh, uh, Google on any advertising, but just having that account gives me access to the tool. So now I'm going to go ahead and type in a few different keywords. Like, um, let's say that I'm selling uh, different kinds of, of cameras, like uh, Nikon, um, uh, Nikon camera, let's do Nikon uh, cameras, Nikon uh, DSLR, Nikon uh, digital camera, Nikon digital cameras, because you don't know if like the singular is more popular, the plural, one verb tense versus another verb tense, one synonym versus another, you need to check your assumptions at the door, and actually just use the tool and see what is real. Now, I've left the targeting at U.S. Uh, you can change it to whatever country you want to target, Canada or um, Europe and whatever, right? So uh, you can change targeting. You can remove the targeting and just get you global results. You can uh, change the date range. You can specify language, et cetera, et cetera. So I went ahead and clicked on the blue button. Now the default tab you're going to get to is ad group ideas, which is not what we want. When we're doing SEO uh, keyword research, we want the keyword ideas tab. 
And so you'll see that the keywords I've specified are just up here with, uh, you know, they're separated by commas. And um, I get the numbers here in the average monthly searches column. That's the column that I care most about here from an SEO perspective. Um, it looks like Nikon cameras is the most popular keyword of this list, followed by Nikon camera. Now, this might be counterintuitive because one thing that you'll find if you type in digital camera and digital cameras is that the singular is more popular than the plural, in this case by a factor of, uh, of five. Right? That's huge, huge difference. But then on the previous search uh, where we compared Nikon camera and Nikon cameras, it was the opposite. It's kind of interesting, right? So uh, you cannot just assume that your uh, your gut is going to be correct. All right, so Nikon cameras plural in this case is like four and a half, almost five times more popular than the singular. And then notice there's a little icon next to the number. This icon, you can mouse over and it will show you the historical trend over the last 12 months. And then I can mouse over a particular uh, bar and see for that month what the actual number of searches were. Well, looks like it's pretty consistent. And again, I will reiterate here that <clears throat> I mentioned it on the slide uh, previous that the numbers are approximations. This really, I think, hammers this home like you get the exact same number of searches for six months in a row? I don't think so. This is an approximation. It's not terribly accurate. Uh, you can also see that same thing happening uh, for four months prior to that, 49,500. The exact same search volume for four months in a row? Yeah, not, not likely. All right, so take these numbers with a grain of salt. It's great to compare and contrast different uh, keywords against each other, like the plural versus the singular. But as far as like uh, trusting that it actually is 60,500 searches per month um, in the U.S. for that keyword, I would not bank on that. Right? So it's somewhere in that general ballpark. That's as, as far as I'd, I'd go. So this is the Google Keyword Planner. Uh, you can also uh, click on one of these uh, headings to sort by that column. So if we want to sort by average monthly searches, look at that. We're going to see Nikon way at the top of the list here. As far as related searches, 165,000 a month uh, just for that brand by itself. But again, that's going to be more competitive and more generic than we want because um, Nikon sells a lot of different things. And also, it's unlikely we're going to beat out Nikon and their various sites that they own for their own brand name by itself. So that's the Google Keyword Planner. Let's look at a couple other tools that I think will be very helpful in not only doing keyword research, but also kind of competitive intelligence. And these include Search Metrics and SEM Rush. So let's have a look at what both of those look like. This is search metrics. I could put in a competitor's uh, URL and then get a uh, list of keywords that that site is ranking for as well as getting traffic for. I can do that in search metrics and I can do the same thing in uh, SEM Rush. So this is a whole bunch of different screens from uh, search metrics. Let me jump ahead to SEM Rush. <coughs> this is SEM Rush, and if I um, look at the organic keyword list, uh, you can see here that's that's pretty cool, right? I can get a sense for, it's almost like I've uh, uh, hacked into their, their Google Webmaster tools, but I didn't. This is not based on the uh, <coughs> Google Webmaster tools data. It's based on uh, scraped Google search results that both Search Metrics and SEM Rush uh, independently have have garner, or, or grabbed, and then um, and we're talking like hundreds of millions of searches, and then scraping uh, 
uh, off of those pages each uh, search listing and um, correlated the search on, on keyword with that um, that listing and what position it was and so forth and then correlating that with the data from the Google Keyword Planner to see how popular these different keywords are and extrapolating what the likely search volume is from those different keywords. You might think, wow, that was a mouthful. Uh, let's actually see it in action. That might be a bit easier, right? So let's go to search metrics and uh, you'll need a paid account in order to use this tool. It's well worth it. This is a really awesome tool. I'm going to put in, uh, we'll just put in Zappos as an example. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the SEO specific data. Um, so I can go here, click on more SEO data. And I'm specifically interested in the keyword list. So here we have the first 20 keywords that they rank well for that are driving traffic. And then I can click on show details to get a longer list. You uh, can filter in different uh, ways, like by uh, position. If I'm only interested in uh, those keywords that they're on page one for, I can look at that. I could look at only those keywords that have a high search volume according to the Google Keyword Planner. Um, I can sort by these different column headings. And then I can export this data and pull it into an Excel spreadsheet. Pretty cool stuff. I can change the number of results per page, um, et cetera, et cetera. So these column headings, uh, so this is the keyword. This is the URL that's ranking for that keyword. This is the position it's ranking for that keyword. And then this is the uh, cost per click according, according to the Google Keyword Finder. And um, that's not very relevant if we're just looking at this data from an organic or SEO perspective. Uh, search volume, we care about that. That's uh, data from the Google Keyword Planner. That'll tell us uh, how popular a keyword is. And then the traffic index is, um, it gives us a rough idea how much traffic that uh, particular keyword is driving to the, in this case, Zappos.com website. So if the position of the keyword uh, for the, if, if that website is ranking quite high, like a position one, then the, the traffic index is going to be higher. If it's a lower position, then it's going to be lower. If the search volume is low, then that traffic index is going to be lower. Right. So that is search metrics. And uh, this long tail uh, tab is going to give us an even longer list of keywords. Whereas that previous tab that we were just looking at is updated weekly. It gives us fresher data. This one is not as fresh, but it's a, it's a deeper analysis. It's a much longer list. Look at that, 374,000 keywords. That's impressive. So if we had some competitors who were just crushing it in, um, in Google for the keywords that we care about, and we do some competitive intelligence using a tool like search metrics, imagine the insight we'll glean um, looking at, at uh, the keyword list from that competitor. And uh, bear in mind that your traditional competitors may not be that sophisticated at SEO. Your competition online is anybody who's outranking you for the keywords that you care about. I don't know if you've heard this, uh, this whole acronym before, but SPAM stands for Sites Positioned Above Mine. I love that. Right, so we want to look at those sites positioned above mine in the search results and then do this competitive intelligence to see uh, what keywords they're, uh, they're ranking for and, and thus uh, see which ones we might want to uh, target in addition. Okay, so that's search metrics and then SEMrush, it's a very similar tool. Uh, we'll, put in, well, we'll put in Zappos again. And we'll go to the um, top keywords for organic. Uh, let's go to full report.
uh, is ranking for that keyword, the search volume according to the Google Keyword Planner, uh, a traffic percentage based on the, uh, the uh, of course this is all um, uh, approximations, but based on the average like click-through rate from that position in the search results times the, uh, the search volume, and uh, that gives them an approximation of traffic volume. Uh, you can see the, the historical trend for um, the last like 12 months or so. You can um, let's see the number of results returned for that keyword, which isn't a very relevant or useful metric, but uh, that's what when you search for that keyword, that's the number of results that get re uh, supposedly returned. But you can only get you know the first you know seven or eight hundred results. Uh, from Google, uh, you're not going to get tens of thousands and into the you know, deep into the search results. Um, so that's not a very useful metric. So this is all uh, pretty comprehensive. Uh, we can get uh, to in this case 381,000 uh, keywords that have been tracked, and we can export to Excel, CSV, comma, separated values, which will pull right into a, a Excel or whatever spreadsheet program you're using. Um, you can also order custom reports, and you can change date ranges, and all sorts of cool stuff. So that's SEMrush. So between those two tools, uh, search metrics and SEMrush, you're going to get a huge um, uh, insight into what the competition is doing and how, how they're uh, uh, how they're performing online. And so um, with that, let's uh, close off this uh, the, the segment. I'll just uh, wrap it up with one more concept, and that is looking at competitiveness. One thing I uh, want to advise against is looking at this metric that some people uh, consider important. I don't consider it important at all. It's called KEI, or Keyword Effectiveness Indicator. It's just a ratio of the popularity of that keyword, the search volume, versus the number of search results returned by that search engine. Uh, this is not a useful metric in my view because it does, uh, first of all, the uh, keyword, um, the number of results returned is, uh, it's not reliable. It's just a, a, a very rough metric, something that searchers don't care about. They just care about what's in the top set of search results. They don't care that there are 300 million results for this keyword or 3 billion results or 3,000 results. They just don't care. And if that number is not accurate because Google knows that Google searchers don't care, so they don't have much uh, incentive to make that an accurate number, then that makes this KEI ratio complete nonsense. Right? And also, because there are a small set of search results returned or a large set of search results returned, does not make that keyword more competitive or less competitive. Uh, so that's uh, something I would caution against is looking at KEI scores. Um, how do I judge competitiveness? I simply eyeball it. I look at uh, the first page or two of the search results, and I look at those listings that show up, how well optimized those pages and those websites are, how clued in to SEO are those uh, different sites, and um, how authoritative are each of those sites in terms of things like um, uh, MozRank, MozTrust, uh, citation flow and trust flow from Majestic SEO and some other uh, metrics relating to authority and trust. So that's how I do it. So this was the keyword research um, segment. I hope this was valuable to you. If you uh, have any questions, feel free to contact me at stefan at stephanspencer.com. Uh, also, please follow me on Twitter. S. Spencer is my uh, handle. And uh, I have some goodies that I'd be happy to share with you. But just email my assistant. Her email is admin at stephanspencer.com. Uh, it's S-T-E-P-H-A-N, by the way. Uh, so email her if you would like uh, a heavily annotated copy of this PowerPoint. So it has lots of additional um, tips and, and, and bullets on it. Uh, you can also get a uh, webinar recording of an hour-long webinar I did on SEO metrics and a best and worst practices and SEO checklist 
and white paper. So all of that is uh, free. Just email my assistant, admin at stephanspencer.com to get those. Thanks for listening.